But welcome to Bass with Buzz, Hunter of Fish, where I have taken the time to show Mr. Don Watts how to catch quality largemouth bass. I think you're full of it. This, what are you talking about? This is a fish. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this. Good got dinner. No. That's not you there? That's not me, nope. Oh, shoot! Oh no, holy cow, man! Holy smoke! Oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, Don, you got a good one! Oh, holy cow! It's a good one. How did you do that? What happened, Don? Well... Caught it on a swim jig. Bluegill color. <laughs> they, they're eating bluegills. Oh my gosh! What a way first fish! So with legendary Michigan angler Don Watts, and I say legendary because I've been hearing about the man forever. And if you're from Michigan, excuse me, should I say Michigan, Indiana, the Midwest, you've heard of him. And I'm out here somewhere in the Midwest. Now Don, I, I gotta ask you about the weather. So it's 2019, it is June, oh I forgot again, 6? Yep. June 6, 2019, we have had an abnormally wet and cold spring. Mississippi River is high as can be. Lake St. Clair, the Great Lakes are way up in their water level. We're somewhere in between those two, Mississippi and, and uh, Lake St. Clair. How about I narrow it down for you? What do you think the impact is on the fishing with this spring, the way it's been? I mean, a lot of people have been struggling, myself included. We're kind of in a post-spawn funk right now where we are. I, I I think they're about two weeks later, or earlier, I guess, um, than they should be. So, you know, I, I, the water temperature hasn't come up to where it should be Yeah. Um, this time of year. 65 degrees where we are right now. Yep, and it should be closer to 70 by now. So, and that's just from the last week that we've yeah. had that warmer weather. So, yeah. um, it, it, it's definitely behind. Every, everything's behind. So. So you think essentially things are the same, it's just later. Right. Yeah, I think, that, you know, this the way things are right now is normally before season starts here in Michigan, Memorial Weekend. Yeah. A um, couple more weeks, then, then it'll be back to normal, is my, my guess. So we're lar largely post-spawn fish. Yep. Which is why we're you're... Right before, yeah, or right at that. Yeah. They might still be spawning too. I mean, yeah. the, way the way the temperature is. So. Yeah, yeah, just this past weekend, I know there were some spawning fish. Yep on this lake so post spawn which really plays in your favor with this jerk bait thing yep not a bad fish yep. yeah if you ever want to see how to jerk bait fish effectively kind of unorthodox but deadly tune in because you're about to see the show of a life that's going to change your life when they're eating it they grab that front hook yep so you always put a red one on there not always but I'm not really a, I, I'm not, I don't truly believe in the red hook, but it doesn't hurt. So, um, if it does give you one more bite or two during the day, why not? You know? yeah. And if you probably notice another thing I do is put a tail on it. I never yeah. throw, never throw one without a tail. Yes, yeah, something I make these myself. I found out, again, it was back when I first started. I happened to put one odd uh, pop R tail on it. And I'm not gonna say it doubled my bites, but I mean, it definitely, definitely increased it that I knew that, that that's what it was. So, been doing it ever since. Oh, all right on cue. Not very big. Oh, see that? That's how you like to see them hooked. Front hook. Yeah. And then the other one's buried in. Yeah. A two pounder. Yeah. Yeah, the biggest thing is everybody, everybody thinks it wears you out. Like I said, I'm not, I mean, in all reality, it's not really that, I'm not freaking, you know, I'm not going like this. Yeah. Basically, it's snapping your wrist. 
Do not be afraid to talk trash to me. Got one? Take that jerk bay yours down. Yeah. I'm done. I've been here for years about how you fish a jerk bait. Countless people ask me, have you ever seen Don throw a jerk bait? The truth is, no. Not until today. Now that I've been able to watch you, I concur, ladies and gentlemen. It's unorthodox. It is. So I see you're using braided line, looks like. Yep. Is that you got braid line there? Yeah, fire line. Fire line, okay. What? I guess I want to ask you, you hear the story? how did you, yeah, let me hear the story. <laughs> I told this at all my seminars because it gives you a background of, of why I decided to do it. Um, back when I was younger, it was in the late 90s. We were out fishing on the lake I lived on with my dad and pulled out a Smithwick jerkbait and very first cast caught one. That's a good way to start. Yep. And then nothing after that. So, a couple weeks later, I was fishing a tournament with a friend on the lake. And uh, we weren't catching anything. So I pulled that jerk bait out, first cast of collar. And then I proceeded to catch a nice limit. And I had a great big one on and broke my line, lost it. And I don't, back then, I, you know, fluorocarbon really wasn't anything, so it was mounted filament of some sort. Got him. So it was one of the first years that Fireline came out. I'm like, I'm going to try that. So, and on that mounted filament, you would miss a lot of fish. Or you'd hook them and they'd come right off, you know, because of the stretch. So I tried the Fireline, and I bet my hookups doubled instantly. Now that retrieve? Yeah, it's something I've learned. I mean, just while well, developed over the years. Looks like you just got angry and decided yeah. I'm going to beat the snot out of it for and a the while. The thing is, I'm not, I mean, I'm really not doing, it looks like I'm doing it hard, but I'm just, if you watch, I just snap my wrist. It's not. And there's a lot of slack in your line, actually, yeah. every time you do it. Yep, and basically when I, when I do it, as soon as that bait hits, I let, basically let go and the rod comes back. Yeah. Maybe not even that. Small keeper. Oh, it's got yeah, a special jerk right there. Yeah, yeah, it's gotta have that's gotta have the bill back from the nose. Cause uh, most of the jerk baits nowadays have the, it's basically the jerk or the the ring is hooked to the, the yeah. bill. Yeah. And with those they're basically they make their own action and I'm given this action. So with the other ones, they always spin around and hook themselves when I'm doing this, so I can't use really anything else. A husky jerk will work, but they're lighter. So you are a Smithwick Rogue yes. guy. That's yes, and this is a special order. They discontinued this uh, years ago. And uh, Alan Bob Swartz ordered like 3,000 of them. And, so I got and you got 2,999 uh, I didn't get that many, but I've got a few. Got him. Yeah. Tail hook. There you go. A chunky monkey. Yep. Then the next question I get is why fire lines? Well, I've tried. I'm sure there's something out there that works just as good. But I've tried a lot of different braids. The big problem with braids is they're limp. Yeah. This. It's not, it's stiff. So it doesn't hook. What'll happen if you get that limp line, when the bait turns, it'll hook it on the front hook. And you'll get, it'll be like that all the time and it'll screw up your cast. Happens all the time. So you need something that's that's stiff that won't do that. Yeah, yeah. Well, do a jerk bait fish right here, Doc. That's right. This? That's how you catch a big one. Yeah, that's right. Now what are you catching, Don? Oh, you right, got a quality fish right there. Yeah, it's not that big. That's all right. A little swim bait. Yeah. Damn, man. 
Jerk bait, swim bait, swim jig. Why aren't you going to catch them up? Well, I'm on eight pound test line, so he, they all feel big. Right. Well, I, I don't think he's shabby. And this is a monkey punch fish here. Yeah, we'll let Don catch the big ones. I'll catch the two pounders. There he is, yeah. As you can see, got that monkey punch right where you want it. What? Why don't I join you for a moment? Oh, you done? Doing All right. See, that's how you hunter fish style right here. Yeah, maybe I got a sheet. Oh, yeah. Look at that son of a gun. There. Ah. Come here. Yeah, that monkey punch or the XBT Formula G3. Catching on everything today. Can't seem to put down that stupid tube. <laughs> Caught this morning. Oh yeah, you leave me with a pound and a half. Don't worry about that rock bass I just caught. Just focus on this one. Yeah. Ooh, put us on some fish here, Don. Sure are catching a lot of uh, post spawn fish here, Don. Oh, nice and healthy, chunky fish, though. Well, there's another episode of Bass with Buzz, Hunter Fish with Don Watts. Now, he's going to give you some line of crap about how this was a really bad bite. I guess it didn't hit normal Don standards. But our it best... Did that did not. <laughs> but yet, our best five would have easily hit 15 pounds. Right. So, Don, you're talking about this is like the very beginning of post-spawn. Uh, your take on the day as far as what is happening out here and where we caught our fish because we did catch quite a few fish yep um normally this time of year you know the bigger fish are moving moving out get out on the outside break edge that's where we can catch them with a jerk bait really good well they're not out there yet they're still up on top so that's that's basically where we caught the fish we're up in that you know seven eight foot of water up on top so what makes those big fish so hard to catch then? they're just tight that's why they're big yeah that's why they're big but i, I it's that post bun blues you, everybody yeah. hears about yeah. um and it there's no doubt that it's it's at that stage um right now that it, it's hard it's hard fishing plus something the weather's so crazy yeah um up and downs you know they've they're they're screwed up also so yeah. so post spawn fishing i mean the jerk bait's a deal um real quick on your setup and jerk bait you talk about your fishing line now you're riding real I just I use left-handed bait caster. Mm -hmm. um, I am right-handed, but I use left-handed reels. Um, obviously, I can snap the rod a lot longer and a lot harder um, using my strong arm. So yeah. I, I, I grew up doing it that way. So that's what I do, and that's why I can last all day where most yeah. people can, I guess. So, yeah. um, but basically, it's it's a six foot six bionic blade. It's a cheap rod. Bionic blade. Yeah. All right. I, I cut the end off the butt oh, yeah, okay. because it's too long. Mm -hmm. um, I got short arms, so it's always hitting me if I don't. So I cut like three inches off. That way, it doesn't slap me in the stomach every time I. Uh, now you're real. So it's just a it's a six three to one. Well, the one I use is a Akuma. Akuma. Yep. Um, it's the Helios. It's the I mean, it's a decent reel. Helios. Akuma. If you go really cheap, no matter what reel you, you use for doing it like I do, if you go cheap, you'll go through a reel a year. I mean, oh, it'll, wow. stri it'll strip the gears off. Throwing with that braid. So you get a nice reel. Yep. Like you get a, like get a, a decent reel, it'll last longer. Yeah. Yep. Now, our biggest fish, his biggest fish came on a swim jig. Caught just a couple doing that. Yep. Caught more than a handful on tubes and a couple on swim bait as well. Yep. So that was, that was pretty much it. We just kept covering water and covering water. And Don, thank you very much for coming out. If you ain't subscribed yet, what is your problem? Hit that subscribe button. Click on notifications. You're going to see all sorts of great stuff with great fishermen like Don Watts. Thank you, sir, very yep. much. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. We are somewhere in the Midwest. <laughs> if you think you know where, keep it to yourself. Mangus. Go.